Newcastle United, a team that holds four Premier League titles and has club legends like Alan Shearer within their club history, have found themselves out of the Champions League race and also, at the time recording, 10th place in the Premier League. However, with the Saudis taking over Newcastle to make them one of the richest clubs in world football, we are here today to take over Newcastle to make them one of the biggest clubs in world football once again. And coming off from there, here we are with the Newcastle Real Build, the St. James's Park team here, the team that's been Taken over by the Saudis, who actually did get Champions League, but find themselves mid table this season. Talk about mid season now, we're going to act like this is a new season, so pretty much we're actually not going to give Newcastle any continental success. So we actually got to gain that within the first season. However, I feel like we can absolutely do well in the first season, considering the team they've got, and like I said, with the take all they have. But let's go assess the team first and see if we can build it any stronger for season one. So here is the new Castle team. Then. And as you can see, it's a very strong team. But considering some of the things that's happened in real life to them due to injuries and also players being banned. That is why their team on paper right now in this career mode looks like this. But talking about the people who haven't, as you can see, Isaac here, an absolute unit. Definitely going to be the main strike I feel like for this rebuild. It might be the actually the first ever rebuild on my channel where we don't actually look to invest into a striker. Considering Isaac is a very promising Swedish striker, I feel like he's going to be the main i got joe luton here with a brazilian teammate in gomarez right who is probably by far their best midfielder we got kieran tripper coming back from atletico madrid to newcastle their captain i mean what a player he is there i mean the free kicks the delirious he can put in he gets so many assists he's an absolute unit we've also got some youth players like miley right here so the only age of 17 but considering he's at the over he is i feel like a low spell could be the best option for him right there that need a bit changing. We've got Dan Burnham, who's a very good player, but we need definitely a new left back here for Newcastle, as it isn't really getting. And to be honest, Nebraska's a good goalkeeper, and so is Nick Pope. But considering Nick Pope is 31, I feel like we can potentially go for a new young goalkeeper right there. However, the latest show with the formation I have gone with is 4 4 1 1. As you can see, we've got the Brazilian kind of duo right here, and Joel Luton and Gamaras in the center of the row, with Marley just in front of them. I mean, Marley can play the position, as you can see from his card, but we definitely need someone there for the newest season that could do the job a little bit better. We've got Almiron and Gordon here on the wings with Isaac, Schlar, Botsman, Trippier, Target, and Nick Pope in the go. We also got some rotation as well in Dan Brown and the Cells as well in the center back row we have got willick as well i mean i'm a bit i think he'd be a very good rotation in center mid let's just say it right there i mean to be honest i'm actually tempted to break up the kind of duo of Joe Luton and Gomez and go for maybe a better Brazilian in the midfield to, to keep that linkage right there or maybe a brand new center mid and really revolutionize this team right here for the money they have gone as well but as you can see definitely the improvements are definitely a cam i feel like a left back and potentially a new goalkeeper. I mean, I might keep Nick Pope for one season, but I think down the line, I feel like we definitely need to improve in that department right there. However, a couple of days have gone by and a couple of players have departed from Newcastle. So as you can see, Lascelles, Longstaff and Lewis Marnie have gone with RC Anderson. Anderson and RC Longstaff have also having so much variety in the middle. I feel like we don't really need any room. So I feel like especially long staff with the likes of Joe Willock, Joe Luton and also Gamoras in the midfield. And then potentially I'll bring in one more. I don't think he's going to have any room. Hence we pretty much done for 18 minutes. Same with the sales, same with the centre-back on rotation we got right there. There's not going to be no much room for him and we can't get rid of the club legend Dan Byrne. Lewis Marley, we said we wanted to loan him out. He had the option of Ajax and Brian and he picked a Brian. And obviously pretty much for the same reason with long staff goes with Anderson as well. It had a bit of potential because Sarian Marley will be coming back. We don't really need him right there. Which means we have now got a whopping 135 million to spend in season one. Which is very tasty indeed. But before we get into that, though, we have got a couple more things to go over right here. Team strategy, we've gone with wing play. I think with Gordon and Albion being very rapid players indeed. And also, to be honest, with Isaac kind of bolting through the middle, I feel like that's going to be the best suit in this 4 4 1 1. Agassi, we have hired out some coaches. And now, lastly, before. We tensely get into some juicy signings. We have now got to look at our objectives from the board this season, which I've, I can't bloody find. And there it is. Here we go. Youth development. Not going to dive right into this season. I don't believe we really need to consider it's only a medium priority. Brand exposure. Get a streak of seven games with at least one goal scored in the home match. is pretty easy there. Sign players from North America. I mean, we could have a look into the high priority. Domestic success. Finish in the Europa Champions League spot. Win the FA Cup. Fair enough. And obviously, no continental success. So, the one is pretty much to sit us in the top four of the Premier League, which is understandable. 
which we have retrieved it obviously a couple of years back. So it could be the verge of doing it again in season one. But I'll be happy with any European competition and hopefully the board does not sack me going into season two. And with this real boot today, we're going to make our first sign in in a player from Roma in Tommy Ansi Baldanzi. I believe has pronounced his last name right there. The 20 year sensation from Italy. He's doing really good in the under 21s Italy team. Recently coming to Roma in the main team for them. He's been pretty decent for them. At the overall at 77, and like I said, at the age of 20, he's got some really good potential about him. And I feel like he would suit new. Newcastle in that new cam row. A young team with a brand new young cam in Baldinzi. The next one, ladies and gentlemen, goes to a player that pretty much went there for money but has got bags of potential in real life. He's a centre mid, he's Spain, he's over 78 in Gabby Vega from Al Hillel there in the Saudi League. He went there to cash the cash. But this guy has got something special about him in the Spain team. He is an incredible player. We did a straight swap with Joe Luton though, so a bit of a risk for this, but this guy's got bag potentials. I think he can hit the overall of a 90 overall, so that's what we got him in next with Bruno Gamarez. The next sign, ladies and gentlemen, we keep getting the blame, same bloody cutscene right here, but the next sign in regardless is a left back from Feyenoord, Netherlands player, overall 77, 21 years old in Hartmann. I'm not going to try and pronounce his first name because it's absolutely butchered it right there. 30 million we've swapped it with Matt Target as well because we just want to open up a little bit more room in the left back row and not cause too much arguments being similar ratings with some of the other players as well but he will be our new starting left back and certainly accepted a rotational role he will be the main left back and last ladies and the last sign in I kept it a bit quiet but it will be Tomori he is going to return back to the Premier League 15 million we were swapped there with Fabian Scher I feel like Cher had to go. I mean, we're going to keep him, but because we've got Dan Burn, the legend, as a rotation of centre back, I feel like with Cher being 31 years old, we need a man that is going to be absolute brick shit house three and grow up to be a bit of a decent overall to go for the Champions League in the near future against with a bottom month. So that's why Tomori coming back to the Premier League, but not with Chelsea and stuff, with Newcastle. I feel like it's be a good challenge for him. So why not be coming from Milan to Newcastle United. So here is the team, ladies and gentlemen, going into season one. I can see Trippier stays our captain, but the new son of Tomori is partnered with Botman, Pope, and also new left-back Hartman with Gordon, Gamaras, Vega, Balzini in the cameras with Almiron and also the main Swedish man up top in Isaac right there. You can see we're up as well. We have got Callum Wilson, Barnes, Murphy, Willock, Nebraska, Livermento, and Dan Byrne as a rotational kind of players and the substitutional bench right here. Overall, I think a very good team. I feel like near the end of this challenge, where it'd be second season, third season, fourth season, you never know. I feel like there'd be a lot of high overall players, especially in Balzini and Vega. I think these two are going to be absolute brilliant, crucial signings for Newcastle throughout this rebuild here today. The only thing now let's do, ladies and gentlemen, is similar to the end of the season. See how this team got in season one and we'll see from there if they have done it and perhaps even got some continental for next season so here we are at the end of the season we literally beat sheffield there three one but lost to burnley all right vincent Cummings team has done really well there we beat brighton though coming beat united away we don't we got absolutely battered there and we guys we've got brain for less however we look like we've actually got to an fa cup final against liverpool right there in the emirates fa cup which is not too bad however how did we get on the league though and we've come fifth. Rory and Norris, who've literally just missed out on the Champions League to Liverpool right there. But we got to win this game. We have to win this game to beat pretty much Man United and Chelsea. Because they're probably going to try and get the result here. But we could get Europa League. So let's just go right into this. Right? Can we get the result here? And we do. So it means I do believe we have got Europa League next season. Which I will take. I don't think that's too bad from the board. To be honest with you. However, we have got the FA Cup. Arsenal finally won the league. I mean, they're on track for it doing it this season. Too far the time of recording. But obviously, we have come fifth in the league. I will take that, to be honest. I mean, considering if it stays the same in this season, where they finish mid-table, the 10th at the moment in real life, they don't get European football. I think that's quite good to get back into European football, to get into the Europa League, I do believe. I reckon we can win that next season. I do truly believe that. Spurs coming third, Liverpool fourth. Second C and Arsenal. Let's have a look at the Cabrera Cup. How did we get on with this one? Oh, that's so annoying. We lost to penalties. It's one of them. It is what it is. It's one of them. I mean, it shows though. There's a lot of improvement. We got to a final, but hopefully we go on to win against Liverpool in the FA Cup for the first time. 
in this rebuild here today so here we have it then it is liverpool versus newcastle we're going to jump into it straight away here can we do it looking at the team it's very good indeed but can we do it that's the question can we get our first bit of silver we're on the quick similar day can we do it and we do with the new signing of balzini and Gabriel Vega getting the goals. Who else? And Kieran Tripp, of course, kicking it off right there. But our new signing in camp in Balzanzi gets the win in 1-3-2, which means we got our first bit of silverware. A very good season. I mean, getting fifth in the Premier League, running up in the Cabrera Cup, and then winning the FA Cup in our first season is a very good season indeed. However, let's go and have a look at the outstanding players this season. There's a lot of growth within the team, which is very good to see. So we've got a lot of contracts expiring. Looks like we've got Lord Carriers right here going to Selwick, which is a little bit annoying right there. A lot of people are expiring on the contracts right here. So we might have to offer some before they do go. However, we'll focus on the stats at hand. Here we have then Isaac absolute killing it. 10 assists, 26 goals in 38. Five in the FA Cup as well, six in six. Could be the player of the season. Looks like Anthony Gordon gone by a lot up as well as onto an 80 French team. We changed his position to a left mid and a Roman to Mount. Same about Miron. I mean, brilliant from these two. Gabriel Vega has gone up a little bit as well. Gamora is doing really well. Kieran Trepper, we said, with his assist. Balzini, considering his overall and his first debut in the, the Premier League, getting nine assists. I'm pretty confident and happy with that. I mean, he's gone up by a plus four. It was absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's a lot of group. We said these two could do it. And to be fair, scoring in the FA Cup final is very impressive indeed. We did actually loan out Miley as well. So let's see if he's got any kind of growth within his car let's have a look to see if we can just keep going down he's got a bite plus two so it's not too shabby i mean if he does come back which i do believe he does another loan spell for him i think would be the best i think if we get him to like a 75 that's when he will actually come into probably the substitutional bench where he can rotate within the team being at that age as well oh and that though a very good season indeed was there any other players that kind of left the teams during january with a loan spell perhaps from the assistant managers who was in charge of the simulation or a sale looks like Karras is also going to sell it looks like livermento has gone to liverpool which to be honest is actually probably quite a good move i mean to be fair considering oh i've gone to the wrong bloody button there let's just go back there i mean he's a very good prospect i mean 79 overall he's going to come back we could potentially sell him or be a rotation over trippier i mean we don't want to get rid of trippier considering he's our captain and also picking up them stats he had. Why would we get rid of him? But saying that, as you can see there, a bit of silverware for Newcastle in Season 1. So here we have it then. Season 2 has arrived in this rearboard here today. Also coming from last season, finishing 5th, claiming Europa League football for Newcastle. Winning the FA Cup, which is very tasty indeed. But for this season, looking at the team, I do feel like we can definitely go into Champions League football. Maybe get to the top 3, maybe top 4. And I reckon, to be honest, we can go on to win the Europa League title slash trophy. Looking at the team now, though, as you can see, there's a couple of points we could make. Yes, I know Almiron had a decent season last season. But considering he's getting there with age, I feel like we can maybe look for someone new. Maybe not as a new starter, keep Almiron as a starter, but someone in that position that and eventually maybe in the third or fourth season can replace him in the near future. Same with Trippier, but I feel like Trippier being the AE3 and the captain for the team, I feel like he could do the job for this season as well considering how many assists he got and also i do like nick pope but considering that he's there was age as well i think we definitely need to look into potentially bringing a new younger goalkeeper especially with the budget of 213 million this season going into the inbox now though you see we've got an offer for tomori here which is not good at all we're definitely going to take that from our one of our roles in man united lord curious does depart though which is very frustrating indeed we've got a player chart here saying well kian is a bit worried about the changing room not too shabby indeed. I feel it will be absolutely fine right there. Looking at the objectives this season, youth development, we're not going to bowl for it in this season. Don't think we really need to, considering I feel like we're going to hit a lot of our high priorities this season anyway. Someone player addition actually from one of the clubs. We could definitely look into that. Domestic success. So they kind of agree with me right here. They want us to kind of retain the FA Cup. We've obviously won it already in this room today, but why not go for two, three, four, why not? I mean, even five times if we get to that stage for this room here today. But they want us to finish in the Champions League spot, which I think is, well, quite realistic, to be honest, concerned how well our team potentially could grow. Continental, they agree with me on this one as well, to win the Europa League. So like I said, we've got the budget, we've got the objectives. All that is to do now is to bring us some new quality players in for Newcastle. So the first signing going to Season 2 is actually one that Newcastle and Real Life are looking at very recently in the transfer list right here. And that is Mafias Suleye from Juventus, the Argentine right winger slash right mid in the team that's why we got him in here today 21 years old at the overall 77 
I feel like I said when Almir and Connor deteriorate and overall, this guy can replace him right there. We try to drop him out with Jacob uh, Murphy, I do believe, but he wasn't any of it. So this is why he's coming in today. He's got a game for us as well. So welcome, Matthew Sule. After making that sign, a couple of days have gone by and we have some bad news. If we go into the transfer history here, as you can see, a lot of big players are left for us. Jacob Murphy, we decided to sell anyway. Also, we got the likes of Matthew Sule coming to the team. We need to open up a position where it doesn't really clash on his potential with Murphy. As you can see right there. Barnes wanted to leave. Obviously, wasn't very really satisfied with getting game time. I mean, maybe it's because he's a left wing and not a left mid. Maybe it con conflicted right there of him being a rotational player. Wasn't satisfied. He went to West Ham out of all teams, Ray Chains. And Callum Wilson was not a very happy man being a rotational striker to Isaac right there. So with them players departing right there, it doesn't matter because we have got a new rotational striker in. From Getafe, Enes Unal here. The Turkish striker, 83 overall. So he definitely will not be starting over Isaac. Got game faces. Well, he's got decent shooting. He's got some decent trades. Hasn't really got the pace there. So it's another option we can use if Isaac isn't really performing. Kind of different type of striker, to be honest with you. He's actually the new number nine. However, he will not be the starting number nine. Let's kind of show you right there. Welcome, Unis and Al. And the last sign they show goes to a new goalkeeper in Diego Costa from Porto. I think it's about time. No offense to Porto. He kind of goes to a better, bigger club in terms of popularity. Let's just say that there. And I feel like where Newcastle is in this career today, I feel like this would be a good move from right here. We paid 50 million. We've swapped it with Nick Poe. So Nick Poe is actually going to Porto. So hey, Porto, you actually have got a decent keeper going your way. But we want Diego Costa right here. The last signing of season two. We've got a lot of money to just keep spare to potentially carry on for season three as well. Where we can really see some big names join the club. But for now, I feel like we're done here with our last signing being a new keeper in Diego Costa. So there you have it, ladies and Here is the team once again going to season two. With only one new star in the team, potentially in Costa as the 85. But as you can see, we have got Matthew Sule there right on the substitution with Cole Unal. Willock, Burn, Livermento, and Nebraska still right there. The team's looking very strong indeed. I've also done the liberty of actually hiring out a couple more scouts as well in terms of the training. As you can see, coach management. We have got a lot more as well, so hopefully that will improve us for Season 2. All that's left to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is to wait and see how this team does in Season 2. And who knows? Retain the FA Cup, get Champions League football, and get into the top three let's see what happens so here we have the end of the season as you can see pure domination from newcastle we lost to Wolves. beat brian away can we beat brentford in our last game and let's say we have got inter in the europa league final right there let's have a little quick gander at the legal how did we get on in the league and to be fair if we beat brentford we can win the league but let's have a quick gander at the other cups before we get into that right there starting off with the fa community shoe did we win this one we did so that's kind of one bit of silver already this season fa cup have we retained it we haven't sheffield versus tottenham in the final weird one fair play in sheffield 3-2 in the semis where did we get knocked out here i'm not too sure let's have a little quick gander god doesn't think has a good run at all to be honest with you we got knocked out in the replay of round three to Everton. So a bit of a terrible FA Cup run this season. Camaro Cup, though, how did we come with this one? Lost out on big final right there. Where did we come in this cup, Benny? Here. We got knocked out by Crystal Palace. And as you can see, Europa League, it is Newcastle versus Inter. You've seen there with the Atletico score. Absolutely battered them. Agra 6 1. Inter get through on penalties. We also beat Napoli right there away to make it 4 3 on aggregate. Who did we beat in the round of 16? Frankfurt. Premier League rounds, we beat Galatasaray 3-2 on aggregate. Let's get into this, though. I mean, if we win this game and City draw or lose, we've won the Premier League in the second season. So it could be on here. Look at the ratings on some of the players. Here we go. Let's see if we can get the win. We have got the win, but has Man City bottled it? That's the question. I can't see. And they didn't. They won 2-1 against Forest. It's a very good season indeed. I mean, we won the Community Shield. Didn't do too bad in the cuts. I mean, the FA Cup, we had a stinker right there. However, we have got one more bit of serial we'll potential pickup in the Europa League right here. Can we do it? That is the question. Premier League standards. As you can see, we come second. One point off the reigning champs in Manchester City. But now it is time to get into the Inter versus Newcastle at the Wolfsburg Stadium. I don't know. I can really pronounce that. Final right there. So here we have it then, looking at their team. It's a very, very good team indeed. They got Human Son as their captain for Inter, which is a very strange one indeed. 
but can we do it this is a massive hard game for us right here but can we do it on the quick sim <laughs> And we fortunately don't. We lose 2-1 in the final. Very frustrating. Isaac gets one back, but it will not be a fairy tale ending for the Europa League. I mean, considering we've got the Champions League next season now, it looks like in this rebuild here today, we will not be getting that trophy without this rebuild. So very frustrating indeed, but it happens. We sometimes lose finals. We had a really good run, but to be fair, Inter is a very good team as we've just seen right there. Now it's time to have a look at the outstanding players of the season, starting off with Isaac. This is the player I really wanted to see, the one that probably caught everyone's eyes. 90 overall in the second season is a joke. I mean, to be honest, with the stats he's getting, surely he was the player of the season, you'd like to think. Tomasu Baldanzi, I mean, 28 goals and 12 assists in that camera is ridiculous, especially them goal contributions. I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, the goals he has got 28 and a camera is unbelievable we said about Melgar Almiro on here potentially getting dropped down in the near future but considering he's got 12 and 12 I mean why shouldn't we he's been brilliant Bruno Gamares brilliant Gordon looks like he picked up I wouldn't say an injury but he's not had the best season right there 36 appearances and only getting three and two in the Premier League is very very bad to be honest with you I mean maybe the potential replacement right there a swap deal but we can't really look away from the overall he is and the age he could potentially grow up Gabriel Vega not a bad one as well I mean, Hartmann not really massively growing up, is he? We needed to potentially grow a little bit higher if we want to challenge for the Champions League. Lennon Ennis Unal came on with two goals out of nine there, made an important role to substitution striker. Let's say Lewis Miley, we did say when he comes in to pick a 74 75, we could bring him back, which I think I will do. And I think, to be honest, well, I will do it as well. Joe Willock, as you can see, is going up. I'll quickly show you now development plan. I'm actually going to change him into the camp, so when Lewis Miley comes back, this guy will go into a camp. And I think, to be fair, the stats he's got. He could be a very high overall cam for a bit of a rotation with Balzanzi in D. So Lewis Marley will definitely be in the contestant for the rotational row for season three in that centre row when he comes back from the zone. Other than that, though, not a bad season. I mean, actually, to be honest, a very really good season, actually. I mean, getting second and one point off Manchester City. It was definitely out of us two in the end for the Premier League. Community Shield, we did win. Also had a stinker in the FA Cup and the Cabrera Cup. And then just missed out by one team in Inter Milan for the Europa League. Season 3 though, I'm going to say it, I think we can go for the Premier League and with us kind of taking it by surprise and looking at the rates of the teams with a couple more upgrades and you've got to remember as well, the money we have had, we could potentially do the treble, you never know. Just going to quickly as well see if anyone did actually depart from the club before we simulate to Season 3 and I don't think they did which is very tasty indeed. So there you go ladies and gentlemen, Season 2 is over, we've hit our objectives pretty much kind of this season but it needs to be a little bit better in Season 3. So here we have it then, season three. Here's here with the Newcastle Rebo. Coming off from last season, obviously we just came second to Manchester City. Lost the Europa League in the final. And obviously didn't do well in the Cabrera and FA Cup right there. Also, we did win it in the first season, the FA Cup. So we have to take that one off right there. But nice to get the Carabao Cup, the Premier League, and potentially the Champions League. And the reason I say the Champions League is also we got the qualification coming second last season. And to be fair, our team is looking very well indeed. I mean, Hartman and Trippier... And I would say probably Isaac are the ones we could potentially replace it. Yes, I mean, didn't have a bad season, but he's only 83 overall. Got to keep going in, even though he had a more worse season, but he's got the 86 and he's a young player. Hartman only the 81 and the 82, and especially with the budget of 290 million, we could definitely improve it right there. However, we do start off with a little bit of bad news. As you can see, we've got two officers, Diallo and Enes Unal. And we can't reject them at all. So not very good indeed. I think to be fair, if we do so, NS Unal, we could potentially make a profit there. But we're not... We, we, sorry, I can really speak there. We would not be accepting an offer to Manchester City. As they were kind of like our rivals for the season, considering they did win the league. There's a man of Diallo here. We will accept him to go to this team right here. I'll tell you what, we'll do the one for Oxford as well. And well, if they want to leave, they can leave. It's absolutely fine right there. Looking at our objectives, low, let's have a little gander at this. Youth development, also within our third season now. Don't think we really need to dive into this. Brank still some one young player was absolutely fine. Continental, they actually do want us to win the Champions League. So the board kind of sees my own visions right there, which I do believe we could do. And also domestic, they want us to win the FA Cup for the second time in this room today. And also this time, the Premier League. So the first sign of season three, you can probably see it is now, it's going to fall to Leroy Sané. 50 million with Almiron in the swap deal. Obviously probably butchered a little bit there with the price tag that we paid for him. But he's a very good player considering we need to kind of compete against Manchester City. He did used to play for them 
So you might know the club a little bit too well there and see how we can actually attack him and just get one set throw and get first. He's done it on all the biggest stages for Bayern. Manchester City, as like we just said. So why not get him in as our new number eight with a weird number that might change out on it there in the right mid row. 86 overall. He knows how to get it done. Welcome, Leroy Sane, for our first signing of season three. And the next on is Jim goes into another rotation of striker for a free one. We literally just swapped him with Enes Unal. We've lost a bit of value on it, but in Patrick Sheik from Bayern Leverkusen. And the 82 Czech Republic striker comes in as our new rotational striker. I mean, when we signed Enes Unal, I believe he took it more on an important role. Hence why he was probably upset and was only at the club for one season. And not getting many games, but this guy has accepted a rotation role. And I think, to be fair, he knows how to get a jump. He's an experienced striker, and I think that'd be very good for Isaac for him to rest out and this guy get some game time throughout the season. But we're not done there yet, ladies and gentlemen. We have got a new left back in Alejandro Bowley. We've also seen the budget we had this season. We can make signings like this. Probably one of Barcelona's biggest hot prodigies in real life. He's 21 at the overall of 85, I do believe. Didn't do a swap deal. 85 million we paid for him. It's a big price tag, but he will be the new starting left back over Hartman because Hartman did come in. He's grown up a little bit overall, but I feel like this guy is just levels above. It's done it for Barcelona, and that is why he's our new number three for Newcastle United. Are we going to sign any more else? We have still a massive budget for this season. Let's find out. And the answer, ladies and gentlemen, is actually going to be no because, as you can see, 11 Mentor has also come back, so he will be our new right back for the season. Well, Kieran Trippier goes down to the bench. The question is, who do I want to do? As our captain, I feel like Bruno Gamaro's boy deserves it in here. Or probably Botman. Do I do Botman? I'll do Bruno Gamaro's. I think he's got a little bit more experience. So I feel like that is why he's got to go in and be the new captain. Well, the main first captain for the team. But it doesn't worry. Trippier, that means that he's not going to get dropped from the squad. Hotman will go to the reserves and Trippier will stay there with Watts. Willock, Nebraska, Miley coming back. Sule and obviously Sheik as our new striker. Obviously, we will be changing work to a varied camp, which is going to be very soon. So that's why we've got Miley right there. Leroy signing coming as our new signing in right mid as well with obviously Sheik and as the cause, Alessandro Baldi. What a team this is for season three, ladies and gentlemen. Pretty much, we're not going to sign anymore. We have got a budget of a pretty much 150 million just remaining. But I think we're ready to go. We've literally, as well, I quickly can show you now and can confirm. If we just have a look right here, we have maxed out pretty much all the staff capability up to 12. So we've hired a couple more just to try and secure ourselves and maybe go for the treble. And mainly, I think we can get to a Champions League final. You never know. Throughout the growth, throughout the season, we're going to see it. Let's see what happens. So here we are at the end of the season. We've just beaten Leo Cousin 4 1, beating Stoke 2 0. It looks like it's absolute demolishing ram from Newcastle. However, our minority is in nearly the red, which is a bit strange right there. And we have got to the Champions League final. Another cause is PSG. It always is bloody PSG. And we've won the league, so we've absolutely battered it right there. It doesn't matter about the Southampton game. Let's go check out the other cups as well. Have we won the FA Cup again? And it is as Manchester City versus Tottenham. Fair enough. How about the Camaro Cup? The one that always gets away from us. And it isn't. It goes to Liverpool right there. But let's have a look at the Champions League. It's Newcastle versus PSG. We beat Leverkusen 4-1 right there in the semis. Quarterfinals, we beat Manchester City 3-0 on aggregate. Seems like in the second leg, we battered them 3-0 at home. Just shows how dominant we've been right there. We beat Barcelona 5-3 on aggregate. And the group stage it is 16 points right there. But now it is time for the final game of the season against Southampton. Pretty sure we should be winning this game anyway. We've won the league when Gordon is injured, which is a big loss right there. It's in the rain at St. James's Park, and we have won three. We're living mental. The new, well, starting right back, Isaac, with the double as well. Are we trying to see how many goals he's got this season? It could be ridiculous from him. But let's have a look at the light standing for the Premier League. Let's have a look at the final positions for everyone right here. Newcastle, Arsenal, Liverpool, Spurs, Manchester City in the Europa League next year. They should actually walk out right there. Man United, Chelsea, and Villa. Who is the team that are going down? Unfortunately, it will be Stoke. Southampton and Crystal Palace, you have had a shocker right there. But Newcastle, pure domination, 88 points. Very tasty indeed. But it is PSG at the Stadio Bernabeu, the home of Real Madrid Stadium in this final rebuild here today. That is uh, right there. Looks like Gordon is injured, which is a big shame going into the final. But let's assimilate this right up here. We've got a lot of, well, inboxes as per usual. But let's just get on the calendar right here and just quickly get to this final. So we can see their team. That is the main thing. We want to see their team. They probably have got the likes of Kylian Mbappé too. Unless he has gone to Real Madrid, you never know. 
We could have actually got Juventus to the final, which would have been probably a bit more an easier final. But looking at that team there, Usman Dembele, Frankie De Jong, Bernardo Silva is the captain. But more in the DM rule. That's a bit of a weird one right there. Manuki, Rudiger, Antonio Silva, Donnarumma, Davies, Luis Alberto, and Xavi in the left wing. With, of course, the main man, Kylian Mbappe. That is a ridiculously strong team for PSG right there. However, looking at our team, though, Vega, Gamares, Paul Danzi, 91, Isaac, 92. Some lots of good players right there. Unfortunately, though, Gordon has picked up an injury. So, I'll tell you, we will play the main man, Sule, there in the left mid row. I'm not really there. I would just bit Hartman in for there. And I think that will pretty much do, to be honest with you. The team is looking good. It's nice to see Sule actually going to get a bit of a debut now for this team, pretty much. He's gone to an 82. He's been looked in real life for them. But now, can he do it on the biggest stage in more against PSG? So, here we have it in Champions League final time. We have changed the kits to the black and white. We had to. We couldn't play in that bloody green kit if we're in a final. There's no kit clash there. But is it going to fall to Newcastle or PSG? It's Bernardo Silva, the new captain in the DM role. Good position there. Going to be different than the Champions League. Also going to fall to the Brazilian in Bruno Gamaros. But it looks like PSG are hitting a strong straight away. We're killing Mbappe. And if he went down there, that could have been a pen. Look at there. Sula plays it inside to Gamaros. Here we go. Nice one there. Just keep the ball. This is what this formation is all about. It's a lot of midfield, and this is what we need to use. Nice there. Lovely play on the wing. And Alexander Baldi there. Trenchy find Isaac. Isaac does well. Isaac, good touch there. Goes for the half volley. And good save from Donnarumma. Probably could have took that closer there. But I felt the vibe. There's me with the Mohawk this time. What a change up on this room did today. Go for something a bit more smaller here. I think we go with Sule on the corner. It's a bit of a small one. It's got that left foot swing. Going to the bottom, no key and trip on the set piece, but we got it instead. Unlucky, falls into Gavriga Vega. We go back away, living mental. We try and go for a bit one two there. We tried to make the run there, but Sule could not do it there. Unlucky. Not a bad start from both teams. Both had chances. I think Newcastle are edging it now after that kind of bit of a slip up in the first five minutes. Looking a little bit better. Antonio Silva, good twist and turns from the Portuguese centre back. Again, good twist and turn in. into his international teammate, into Bernardo Silva. Man of the month, I've got right there. Manager of the month. We will take that right there. Could get manager of the year if I get the Champions League underneath my belt as well with Newcastle. Livermento running forward here. Get the pass off he can. He's kind of just drawn him in. And Leroy Sano with that trait is going to be quite deadly. Isco's in the box there. Isco, what, what, is, where the hell did Isco come from? I meant Isaac there. That absolutely matter. The Swedish striker was kind of calling for it, so we pinged it into him. And nothing prevailed from it. That was unlucky. It was a good chance indeed. Afonso Davis plays it to Luis Alberto. The Spaniard plays it into Xavi Simmons. And for Gabriel Vega, but it will be drawn back from the man in red in the referee. For a free kick for PSG on the halfway line. Bappi's taken it, which is very strange. He should be in more of the attacking area. Frankie De Jong, the Dutchman. One against his former teammates, Andrew and Balde, but Botman there does really well. Try to find and sneak through Kane and Mbappe, the Frenchman. Could play Isaac there. That was, to be fair, very silly for myself. I just passed it right in front of the player. I don't know what I was expecting there. Bruno Gamal trying to be dirty as per usual. But in there from Tomori. Still a bit flat this game. Nothing's really open up for both sides, but you can just tell something could happen. Bruno Gamal plays a good ball there to Sule in his new position. It's fine enough. Big task for him. Isco plays it back out. Sule. Looking for a pass inside to Bruno Gamares. Bruno Gamares, can he find a pass through? He can to Gabriel Vega! And Gabriel Vega there! The man we saw him from Saudi Arabia. He went there for money, but now he's coming in for glory. Bruno Gamares and the other centre linking up. It's a good tidy finish as well. Just kind of falling over in the way with that shot. But he just slips into the top left hand corner. We finally found the gap. And we're one up in the Champions League final. So 38 minutes in, and we make it 1-0. Just very good indeed. Like I said, both teams are just kind of edging forward and just looking for that final pass or shot. And they're going to get it. And we are finally are the ones to get it right there. We came out of our first blood goes to PSG. We would take it right there. They've had an absolute shocker. They're bleeding. we just got to keep them even bleeding more. Mukulele, number 26 here. Trying something, it goes into Kylian Mbappe, his French international teammate, but Botman there denies him again. Got Mbappe in his back pocket. And a good twist and turn there from Baldanzi, but the referee, the man in red, has blown for half time. The fans there lifting up their scarves and banners, knowing that they're one step closer to potentially their first Champions League title, I do believe. 
to that man right there in Vega. One new half time. I'll let you know for many changes. So, ladies and gentlemen, only one change for myself, and you can be seeing him on the pitch right now. It is Kieran Trippier, and also a uh, kindness and generosity. Bruno Gamarch has given him the captain armband for pretty much the first two seasons we had. He said, look, look, you deserve it. If we win it today, you can lift the title. I brought him on because Liverpool was decent, don't get me wrong, but we need that set-piece specialist. And I think, considering we get a lot of corners, it seems like, we need someone there. It'll be a good switch out right there. Just trying to be a bit stay on the moment for Newcastle. Just not wasting time, but trying to just keep possession. So we do not give the opportunity for Keenan Bappard to run in behind. It's a good ball over there. And somehow it has failed to Gamora's. Oh, not for Gamora, sorry, Baldanzi. But we lost it a little bit there, but it's a weird play there for myself. Good challenge from Baldi, though. That is Andrew. Did really well indeed. Still a throw in here for PSG. It's final slow down a little bit here into the second half, approaching the 60 minute. Luis Alberto has gone off. I don't know who for. Has not revealed it yet, or I've just bloody missed it. Run from Bruno Camaras. It's really well again there. Gordon looking home. Looking up from home, sorry. I don't know what I was trying to say. Or on the bench. Thinking he can get his hands on a chance middle here today. Shame he couldn't play. We'd have liked to play with him today, but play with Sully instead. Which is fine. He's going to probably bring him as a substitution anyway. Gabriel Vega, good block there for Pellegrini. That was the guy who came off for Luis Alberto. Really good play back to Antonio Silva. We think from here now, what are they planning here? Alfonso Davis beats one man in Kieran Trippier. It's a good ball into the box. Can we just try and head that down? We can. Trippier does well. We got a bit lucky there. A little bit lucky. You can see what I'm saying there with PSG. They're just kind of being patient. And that's why we're just being a bit slow from movement. We don't want to leave a gap where they can attack because they've got so much quality in that side. Leroy Sani there. Inside pass. It's a ball over the top from Oh, Dan's if you can find it. Kim Trippier can head it down. Okay. Done a right there. It's a decent kind of play there from Davis. But we do win it back. There's a loose pass right there. Sule plays it into Isaac. But he cannot find anything this game. Still 1-0. A very stale, boring final so far in this rear here today. Could be the one we do it though, unless we're going to go into season four if the equalizer going to win the game. PSG, but at this rate, the favors are in our hands. Sule trying to do a bit of skill here, trying to find a pass there. Oh, and Bruno Gamora is there with a dirty little foul. And Isaac now, oh my god, we just tried to just pull for the advantage there, hence we died in Isaac. 80th minute now, PSG looking for something here, but we're not going to give him anything. Now. Antonio Silva, what are you doing there? Do not lease a man. In potential, Isaac, but Kim Pembe does really well. The sweaty centre-back does really well there. Massive mistake there from Antonio Silva. Need to cost them the pretty much the game there, but they're still in it here. Mbappe, Kieran Trippier does well, but we can't get it there. There's a terrible challenger from Trippier. We're still alive. It goes inside, and Davis has missed it. He's bloody missed it. What a prat. Oh, he can't do that. Alfonso Davis with a miss. If anyone's seen my rebuilds in this channel, we signed him for one of the rebuilds and he scored a corker and he can't finish that there. That is an absolute travesty. And I think that's costing the Champions League. Because now, ladies and gentlemen, oh God, Jesus Christ, don't speak too soon. Bolde, the committing men forward. We've got to go back here. Up we go. There could be a head on here from Isaac. We can't do it, but it's still got live for PSG. Shabby Simmons, Kieran Trippier. This has got to be their last attack. Trippy does well. Trippy just get her out. And that's all she's wrote, ladies and gentlemen. It's only going to finish 1-0 in the first goal in the first half. PSG did all they could. But Newcastle, the mighty Newcastle, has survived the attack. The rush from PSG. The PSG Giants here. The French Giants just couldn't do it. That man right there, just here on your screen. Alfonso Diaz had the chance to bring it into extra time. But he missed a sitter. Mbappe put it on the plate in Newcastle and myself and I have revealed this team into something that I think can sustain the Premier League and maybe the Champions League for a long time now. So that is it ladies and gentlemen, the rebuild is being completed within the three season, the last ones we've done within the two seasons but we're going back to the free one here now it seems. It took a little bit longer this team, decent team here as I say of all of them, I expected a bit more Challenging the FA Cup and the Cabrera Cup. But I'm happy this man right here, Kieran Trippier, can get his hands on the Champions League. Obviously, the Thierry with overall with due to his age. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The challenge has been completed. It's a fantastic team. Let's continue on.
And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we did win the Champions League. A very stale, boring final, but it is sometimes just one of them. It could be 1 0, 3 all, extra time penalties, but we have done it regardless. Isaac, right there, sitting next to the trophy, right there. Also, we won the Premier League as well. And also, I believe in our first season, we did win the FA Cup. So, the three main important trophies are there. We're still missing the bloody Carabao Cup. Maybe I should do a reboot where we just focus on winning the Carabao Cup. But there it is, that eight points clear from Arsenal to win the Premier League. And then, also, of course, winning the Champions League, as we have just seen there. 1 0 against the French Giants in PSG. A shame about Gorn again injury, but let's have a look at the outstanding players for this season. As you can see, Alexander Isaac takes the spotlight once again. However, for me, he's probably not the player of the season. I'm probably going to have to give it to the camp in Tommy Ansel Baldanzi, the Italian rider, 26 and 17. Is a joke. Absolutely ridiculous. But obviously, Isaac with the 36 is very decent indeed. But their assists are absolutely stunning from Tommy Ansel Baldanzi. They're 91 overall, 92. Gordon also played a lot of games, unfortunately, getting up to 21 goals. But picking up an injury, obviously, coming into season two, he didn't have the best one there. But obviously, in this season, they're a lot better as well. And it's nice to see Mafia Sula getting 10 and 4 as well. The fourth top goal scorer in the team of this season. We've obviously said he could be definitely something, hence why the whole Almir. Um, but with the money we had, we couldn't really deny and look at Rosani. But like saying that, Sule with less games has had a way better season than Leon Rosani. 10 more, well, pretty much more goals and more assists, which is very strange and very really intriguing indeed. Bruno Gamaras with the 12 as well. See with Hartman finally going up as well, but obviously Balaj and Baldi coming in. He was also getting pushed out. And obviously, to be fair, Tomori and Botman only getting the one goal. Lewis Marley got up to 77 now. That's why we got the rotational. The same with Kieran Trippett in Season 3. Regardless, that has been very decent rebuild. Indeed, very dominating as well. It's nice to see the board with Connor agreeing on the kind of plans I had as well, like we said with the Champions League. They met with expectations and we have delivered. The only last thing to do now, ladies and gentlemen, to finish off today is have a look at my manager career. Let's have a look at the stats here. Biggest win of 5-1 against Leeds. Biggest defeat is against Fulham against Man United, which is fair enough. 168 played, 113 won, 22 draws and 33 losses. And as you can see there, one league title, one domestic sub and one continental being the FA Cup, the Champions League and of course the Premier League. It's took a three seasons and we have got it done right there. So there you go ladies and gentlemen, if you did enjoy this video here today, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.